The Angry Chicken is a production of amove.tv. Check out Amove TV for more podcasts covering Blizzard games. And for more of Jocelyn's gaming podcasts, visit jossplays.com. The Angry Chicken is brought to you by our legendary patrons over at patreon.com slash TAC. Time's up. Let's do this. You smell like a leper gnome! I knew it! So hot! A podcast about Hearthstone and Battlegrounds. This is The Angry Chicken! Welcome back, everyone. I guess this is, uh, it's not the eve, because it's not the actual day before, but as far as this podcast is concerned, it is the podcast before expansion release. So happy Forge in the Barrens Eve, everyone. I'm Garrett. Here is all, here is almost as always with Ridiculous Hat. Here as sometimes, yes. Uh, happy 20.0 Eve. 20.0 it is it is accurately 20.0 eve you are absolutely uh you're absolutely yes. correct there's a lot of there's a lot of date confusion um going on in the hearthstone space which we're gonna do our best today to clear up for the fine folks listening out there um but yeah we're back it's another episode forge and the barons is right around the corner uh Joss tweeted today that she she had her uh, she she is out from her procedure, which is the whole reason she's taking some time off, and everything went great. So, um, yeah, Joss continues to be fine and still on medical leave. So, if you haven't already, tweet at Joss Plays all of your best unicorn gifts, um, and maybe you know tell her you wish her well. Meanwhile, Hat, you and I are both kind of sick. We're both getting over getting sick, and neither of us had COVID. I don't know how this happened. Also, you're nowhere near me, so I guess I got you sick over the internet. Yeah, um, I actually checked my notes. I looked up to see if that happens, and uh, it says, yes, it does work that way. So it must have been, it, you got me. You got me sick. Okay. Uh, All right, good to know. Yeah. Good to know. So, yeah, if there's any awkward pauses today, it's because we both are riding our mute bu- buttons simultaneously while things attempt to vacate our face. Yeah. Uh, ooh, that phrasing. Um, I'm going to put in an early nomination for show title, but also uh, I will point out I'm coming out of being sick. Really happy to be here to talk about this stuff today. But the thing that stopped me this morning is I realized, hey, I don't feel bad, but I'm coughing and making bad noises. So I took my morning coffee with my cough suppression medicine. We're in an interesting headspace today, so we're going to just have some really hot takes on these new cards. It'll be oh, fun. Hell yeah, man. I'm 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 on a, 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 a I'm on Sudafed. Okay, it's you have to sign when yeah. you buy it. It does weird things, especially if you've had caffeine that day. So yeah, it'll be yeah. a good one. Sudafed, ah, oh, Team Mucinex. Oh, okay, we all right. Fight now. All right, uh, not sponsored by either of these, and also you know not a over the counter drug. I don't think either of us have actual strong preferences about which cough medicine we take. I prefer to not be taking them or need to take yeah, them. Okay. That's my preference. There my preference go. is to never need to take this junk. But it is also nice to breathe normally. And it's also nice to talk about Hearthstone. So it's, it's, we're going to have a big show today. We're going to talk about uh, the 20.0 patch notes um, and all the dates uh, where various portions of all of the new Hearthstone stuff that's coming out will be hitting one day at a time. Uh, and then we're going to talk about class highlights for Forge and the Barons. All of the cards have now been revealed. We're going to talk about the archetypes that seem to be coming to each and every class in the game. Fortunately, that does mean we will have to start with Demon Hunter because we're going alphabetical order. And if that's probably the worst one to start with because it's a little unclear. But we'll get to that when we get there. And then if we have time, we'll talk about a small update to Battlegrounds that's also coming. But before we get to any of that, we want to thank those of you supporting us over at patreon.com slash TAC because this is an independent podcast. No matter how excited we get about Hearthstone, we don't actually get a check from Blizzard. Uh, but we do get paid by our lovely patrons supporting us over at patreon.com slash TAC. If you do that, uh, not only do you support Jocelyn, myself, Hat, we're paying you for your your residency here at the Anger Chicken. We wouldn't be able to do that without our patrons. Thank you, patrons. Yes, <laughs> it's Garrett. Garrett asked the patrons, and the patrons said yes. You can pay him. Yeah, yeah did we do? Oh, did, were we supposed to run a poll? I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Okay. No. Yeah, sorry. we're gonna we're gonna leave how much we pay you up to uh, pu- popular opinion. How does that sound? That sounds perfect. Okay. Cool. Um, yes. But I also, also accept payment in forms of cheese and puns. <laughs> Delightful. I'm, I'm into this. I mean, I also accept payment in cheese. Uh, but uh, you also get access to the Discord, ad-free version of the podcast feed, plenty of other stuff. Check it out over on the Patreon. And to our most recent patrons, we've had quite a few in the last week. We want to thank uh, Scott Ballantyne, Vic Weidman, Adam Penrose, Fallen Son, uh, and we also want to shout out to Tim J and Christopher for upping their pledges, which is uh, well, that's also something you can do, and we appreciate it when you do it. So... Thank you very much to our new patrons. Thank you to everyone who's still here. And uh, thank you to those of you up in your support. Um, And now, uh, the whole episode is basically a news show, but I feel like we should still play the news bumper. So let's do it. Good news, everyone. (laughs) All right. uh, 20.0. The, the patch for the Forged in the Barrens uh, expansion, think of it as almost the pre-patch, maybe if you're a WoW fan, uh, drops tomorrow. However, th- there's a lot of things that aren't coming with 20.0 tomorrow. There's very specific things that are, like the classic format. Hat, or is that going to be the first thing that you do tomorrow when this patch goes live? The first thing that I do is going to be to refresh all my mobile devices to see when they start getting the patch and also explaining to people, hey, this is happening now and this isn't because there will be a lot of questions. But when I first log in, oh, gosh, I'm I'm afraid to tell you the first thing I'm going to do because I might not stay on the show if I do. Uh, I'm trying to think you're going to play uh, duels. No, no, I like duels, but I don't think you would kick me off the show for that. Go into wild. And I'm pl- I'm gonna start deck building with this card, uh, the caverns below. Oh, uh, okay. Right, hey, man, listen. Um, I I do like wild, and I and I tend to, I t- I tend to f with it, as the kids would say, from time to time. I will not be effing with it tomorrow, so I will not be on the receiving end of your bullshittery. But I just I want to quest rogue a little bit. I don't even know if it's good anymore. Just just. It was so nostalgic back in the day. It was like a little puzzle, and and I, I want to talk about it, but every time I do, people just stop listening to me and go away and stop being my friend and don't come to my birthday party. Well, I will uh, I will still be your friend, and once I am vaccinated, I am happy to come to your birthday party because I know that you are you know near New York, uh, a city which I love visiting, and you're a person I indeed like spending time with. So it's, well, like a, it's a win-win. I appreciate you not excommunicating me. Also... Yes, we'll be playing classic. Also, we'll be playing weirdo standard. And yeah, it is, um, is going to be the strangest uh, few days of Hearthstone ever, right? Because the yeah. we 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 have uh, a, a ton of card reversions. We're getting a nerf to Nitro Boost, which as probably the most outspoken rogue fanboy I know. I'm curious your thoughts too. It's going up by one mana. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. I, We're on the same page. It was because... way too much damage for one mana and also enabled cutting class, and people would just die out of nowhere. And by the way, there was a bug with it that seemed like it was intended. You know how you used to, if you corrupted it when you secret passage, you kept it? That wasn't supposed to happen. So they fixed that too. Oh, so good. So if you corrupt it off of secret passage, now you put the corrupted version back in your deck. You don't keep it anymore. Yep. Yep. Also, I saw, yeah. what the hell was it? Was it, uh, I think, Paralytic? There was actually quite a few things I saw uh, that scared me from the new set when thinking about Nitro Boost still being in the game. Um, so, okay, cool. We're on the same page then, because I, I was terrified. Yeah. I was seeing some of this new new weapon synergies coming in Forge and the Barons and thinking in the back of my mind how many times um, I've died still pay- playing uh, Resurrect Priest. Yeah, sorry, everybody. I've become what I've hated, officially. Um, too, too, too much damage coming in from Rogue and just thinking about how much more potential damage and how they might be immune while they're doing so because they might have that, that paralytic poison spell and uh, just a lot of thoughts. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm personally we'll happy talk to see about Rogue boost. weapon stuff. We'll talk about Rogue weapon stuff in the new card section, but yes, it's Nitro Boost just... It, it did too much for too little. I'm glad they nerfed it. I don't know if it needed to be this harsh of a nerf, but it needed something. Yeah. The other thing coming tomorrow is the change to the Shaman Hero power, you know, kind of piling on to the very weird standard we're going to we're gonna find ourselves in. 
uh, the 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 shaman hero power to remind you is changing, and um, well, wrath of air, the spell damage totem, as we all like to call it, because I never remember that it's called wrath of air, is uh, is is going away and being replaced with a brand new totem, which is the strength totem. Uh, which is a zero two totem that reads at the end of your turn, give another friendly minion plus one attack. So it's 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 yielding, it's 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 buffing that card so that that buff would would stay if strength totem died. This isn't like an aura effect, like flame tongue or anything like that. Yeah, it's the it's what micro mummy does. If you play battlegrounds, you see micro mummy. It does the same thing as micro mummy. In a turn, something gets a permanent little boost. Um, yeah. yeah. So like, and there's, <clears throat> I'm gonna mute for a sec. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> this will be yeah. today's episode. Back to hat. Yes. Changing the title of the episode. I'm going to mute for a second. Um, so they're just... 20.0, to give the large picture overview, this is maybe the biggest single patch they've done ever. The only competition I can think of is when they put Battlegrounds in the game. Uh, uh, but in yeah, terms of I just, think that's fair. In terms of the sheer volume of stuff they're doing, tomorrow on patch day... They're doing about half the stuff, which means they're only adding a format, changing a core hero power, nerfing a card, reverting 36 cards, uh, resetting all the achievements, rotating duels, and adding and nudging battlegrounds. That's about half of what they're doing, not to mention the other game improvements that we have yet to talk about. Kind of insane. It's, it is a lot. It is a massive, massive patch. And then more continues to come down the line. Right, uh, so Tuesday next week is when we actually get the expansion. That seems to be the biggest source of confusion. I see a lot of people thinking we get it tomorrow. Like, duels rotates format tomorrow, but arena rotates on Tuesday. And in duels, you can actually get Baron's cards starting tomorrow before the expansion even comes out, but you can't in arena until Tuesday. There's there's a lot of little stuff that's kind of weird going on in this five day period, um, and also a note: if you're listening to this right now on Wednesday, March twenty fourth, if you're playing the tavern roll before the patch, you actually don't want to play it right now unless you really want a classic pack because after the patch tomorrow, instead you will get paid a year of the Phoenix pack, which is current standard cards, and that's how tavern brawl is going to work going forward. So if you're listening right now. Don't play the Tavern Brawl yet, unless you really want a classic pack. In which case, play the Tavern Brawl right now. Yeah, that's it's. We were having a little chat about this off off air because I was just like, oh, I completely forgot this was happening. It's like I can't remember the last time I played Tavern Brawl, and you're like, yeah, well, you, you should probably remember it because now it's very relevant, and and that's true. Uh, like it's getting a, a current pack to me is such a bigger uh, deal. Than, than getting a classic pack. I don't I don't need a classic pack. I'm not interested. Um so yeah. I'm I'm happy to uh I'm I'm happy about that change, but still, like haven't touched it in a while. Completely forgot that that change was happening. Thank you for reminding me is what I'm trying to say. Of course. And yeah, that's fifty two more relevant standard packs a year for more invested players. I think that if you were a newer player to the game, Tavern Brawl was probably a great way to like slowly build up a classic collection because Classic was like the the side of broccoli. Uh, I think we've had this discussion before, where it's, you know you need them, but it's not the exciting stuff. And sometimes you would open classic packs, be like, oh boy, I really need a classic legendary, what I get? And you turned over, it's like, oh, I got the Beast. Oh, I got Lorewalker Cho. Oh, I got Nat Pagel. And you still wanted that Alex Straza or Maligos or whatever. Um, now it's just exclusively relevant and dustable standard cards and the core cards that you need, you just have them. Yep. Um, what else? Are we, sorry, I'm, I, I skipped ahead and went to Tuesday for the actual expansion releasing. We're also getting more deck slots tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's when we get the nine more deck slots. Nine more deck slots. They update the end of season rewards chest this season to give Baron's packs, which we will see in the chest. We don't get them yet. That's not until Thursday. April Fools, but not really. You get Baron's packs. And for you BG gamers out there and folks that aren't as invested in ranked, the win five ranked games weekly quest becomes re-rollable tomorrow. So if you don't want to do that, you get to click the re-roll button. I think that's a really big quality of life. life I've, I've heard this requested from a lot of our listeners that primarily play Battlegrounds. Um, and, yeah. I, and also it just stuck out to me as strange when 
when the the new quest rolled out, the new quest system, the whole new reward system rolled out, I was just like, but what about the people that don't play ranked? And so, yeah, it's, uh, hey, can we officially give it, and I don't want this to turn into a 20 minute dissection postmortem of the rewards track, but can we finally give the rewards track like a stamp of this is good? Because to me, I'm very happy with it now. I am quite happy with it now. I have quite a bit of gold now. Ridiculous, huh? With your caveat that you don't want me to talk more, which is a stupid thing to say before you bring up something that we can talk about for easily the entire rest of the episode. Yes, rewards track, good, thanks. (laughs) Wonderful. I love it. All right. So the next thing that happened, so that's everything that's happening tomorrow. Tuesday is new set goes live day. We also, on top of the expansion coming in, we're getting the classic and the core rotation. We're getting the update to classic packs. We're getting the refresh to the rewards track and also the reset of the rewards track, which makes sense. It's a new expansion. That's when it's supposed to come in. We're getting the arena rotation, which you already mentioned. And you can buy the tavern pass for cosmetics. Uh, and uh, you, it's Samoro that we get, right? The new diamond Samora, which I don't even think we've talked about on this on this program yet. We're getting we diamond cards. Then, yeah. He so the diamond cards I am I am waiting to pass judgment until I see them in play, because I think the movement is a really vital part of how they look, and I haven't seen them in the game yet. Uh they look like not Hearthstone cards. And some people are like, that's really cool. And other people are like, I like Hearthstone cards. And I think both opinions are totally valid, but until we see it in the client in front of us, I don't know how it's gonna look. But I, I'm, I'm going to pass judgment right now. I think uh, Samuro okay. looks great, and Brucon looks kind of meh. Okay, reasonable. Yeah, uh, the, S- Samuro has a fantastic uh, pose, and they showed it on during the reveal stream. They showed the the animation, um, and I really dig it. Like his little knees coming up, and that's moving, and his arm with the sword is moving. Okay. Brucon, he's just he's so stiff. He's just holding two axes, and like, and this isn't a dig on the artist. I, w- I wonder if they like asked for it this way because it would be easier to animate or something, but. Like, the two of them side by side. Samoro looks so much cooler. Samoro is like, that's the hook, right? Because you get it included immediately as soon as you spend your 20 US dollars or whatever currency in your local country. That one has to be the curb appeal card. So they had to put the resources there. Uh, Brucon, I don't know if it was just different timeline and how they got the spec out there to the artist or... I don't know the specifics. But I agree that Samoro is, is... it just it's even better framed in the card. Like look at all that space above Brucon. What are you doing with that? Yeah, like the axes have them break out the top of the card. Like really get crazy with it. There's probably some limitations we do not understand, but you know. Yeah. I either way, the general rule with the tavern pass is if you like the shinies, you should buy it. And if you don't, you shouldn't. There's a really, really small subsection of the community that if you're over level 200 in the current pass and you really like incremental backloaded profit, then go ahead and spend your $20. But usually, if you like the cosmetics, then buy it. And if you don't, then don't. Um, but the Samura you get off of the rewards pass is immediately playable. You can put that in your deck. It counts as a golden towards the golden coin. Um, but that also means you won't open Samura in packs. So if you buy the tavern pass... I hope you like the look of Diamond Samuro because that's going to be the Samuro you play with. I mean, it's 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 pretty cool, and we're getting a, a very low number of them, right? I feel I feel yeah. like if I could get a full set of these things, which I wouldn't even want to think about how they would actually, how difficult and expensive they would make it to even get to that point. But if it was even possible, it would just be a busy, kind of nightmarish hellscape of of lots of colors and animations um that i don't think i would be into but the fact that it's like these diamond cards are so rare in number right we're getting two two for the entire set and just the thought of you just you vocalizing the thought of a full board of diamond cards i have to go take my phone and put it in the freezer because it just it's not going to be able to take it (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah exactly i i i I like them as is um they're, they're they're a little gaudy but i think they're supposed to be they're literally called diamond cards it's supposed to look ridiculous um, personally, I like weathered, textured, battle-worn looking things. So I'm, I'm not like dying over these diamond cards, but the, the scene tomorrow animated is freaking, freaking rad. So that I'm, I'm, I don't I'm think any of that. us were expecting this. So it's hard to have preconceived notions of what they were going to do next. They just made up a new thing. It's like, Hey, by the way, your cards do stuff in play now and they're weird and, and gem like, or whatever. I don't know. It's, 
I'm looking forward to seeing it. And even if it's not for me, I think it's probably for someone. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then we move down the line. Uh, it, as we move into April, uh, on April 6th, we get the first book of mercenaries for, is it Rakara? Rokara, I think. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then uh, it was announced Sour Fang uh, as a new hero in Battlegrounds, and he goes live on the 8th of April. Even though he's shown in details in 20.0 patch notes, which is very strange. Well, so it's an early access. If you have the perks, you can get Sour Fang as of tomorrow, and then he enters the general. Oh, my mistake. I misunderstood that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I too. They've been doing that for a while, but we're, you know, we're out of touch whales that all have the perks. So like, we don't, we don't see the difference between those early access heroes and not. There's always that little fine print at the bottom of those patch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think about that very often because yeah, I buy the perks. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of the major rollouts for, for 20.0. Like technically the patch hits tomorrow, but all of the things that we're getting come in stages over multiple dates. So the, the next five days, starting on Thursday, this is a weird middle ground period where Standard will have a bunch of super busted cards that are rotating out in five days, so play them while you can. You'll get one mana mana worm in Standard. It's a one-two. You get three mana conjurers calling back. All these other cards. Uh, we went over them uh, on last episode, I think. Uh, but whole big list. You can play with them in Standard. And so if you want to do that, feel free. You can play Classic. Uh, Wild will have their reversions active immediately, and then they stick with them. You get the new achievements, but they still apply to the old track, so if you want to advance a few more levels on the old rewards track, then you can do some of the new achievements and get there, because the new achievements don't necessarily need the cards. And if you want to play with the new cards, you can go to duels, and duels will have the new cards in the buckets that you can pick, and you can play with those cards if you find them and get achievements. So weird. And then, in the, after this weird Franken-standard period is over in five days, then everything just jumps over to the new year of the Griffin. I want a Peter Griffin soundbite right now, and I did not prepare for it. <laughs> there it is. Yes, I had it ready. <laughs> there, there, there it is. So, uh, yeah. Also, important note, for people that like opening packs early in pre-releases, th- because you can get some more from the Tavern Pass, but you can't buy the Tavern Pass yet, and because Mancrick is given to everyone for free on level one of the new rewards track, but that's not active yet, then if you open a Samuro, Golden Samuro, or Golden Mancrick during pre-release time, you can dust it for full value for a week. I'm, that's pretty cool. I'm very glad they thought about this. This seems like the thing that, like, a, even a year ago, we talk about how much Team 5 has changed in, like, the last few years, but even a year ago, I feel like, they would have missed this, and we would have had a Reddit thread, and it would have been a thing. But they caught it. Not only did they catch it, but Celestalon was live tweeting his status of getting it dealt with the entire weekend, and he was he was working on it every day and tweeting like, "Hey, we're working on this. Hey, we're working on this. Hey, here's the solution." So we didn't even have to pick up the purple phone. Celestalon, if you're out there, good job, buddy, and thanks to everyone else who came up with the solution. I think it's a very elegant solution, just rewards players in such a major way. Yeah, it's it's really elegant. I like that they've done this. Um, and so before we move into talking about lots and lots and lots and lots of new cards, um, we have a sponsor to thank today, and we're going to take a minute to thank them. Uh, Honey. Honey is back sponsoring this episode of The Angry Chicken. If you've never checked them out before, I recommend you do. Go over to joinhoney.com slash TAC. Um, but listen, we, listen, we all shop online. I do uh, more than I would probably like to uh, admit to really... Uh, anyone, but we've all seen that promo code field just sitting there and taunting us. We see it in our dreams. Maybe it's just me. Anyways, thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes uh, can be a thing of the past for you. uh, Honey is a free browser extension that just scours the internet for promo codes and it just applies the best one it finds to your cart. It happens automatically and Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. Um, So actually, uh, very recently, I decided it was time to support one of uh, my favorite creators on the web that I happen to also work with over on a WoW show, but I'm a big fan of Talius and Avatel's World of Warcraft coverage. It's a game I've been playing for far too long, and uh, I wanted a coffee mug, so I went to their shop, threw it in my bin, and Honey's like, hey, hey, Garrett, I see, I see you are supporting one of your fellow creators 
how'd you like to save three bucks on this coffee mug? And I was like, uh, I mean, clearly, clearly the answer is yes, honey. What do I have to do? And honey was like, hey, just hit this button. I hit a button and boop, it found the best code. There it is. Three bucks saved. It was wonderful. I really liked it. It happens automatically. Uh, honey has supported the Anger Chicken for a few years now. So I've saved a good chunk of cash, which uh, I usually joke with Joss uh, leads to buying more pizza. As a matter of fact, Honey has actually saved me money on pizza before as well. So go check them out. Join Honey.com slash TAC. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and you'll be supporting the Angry Chicken. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash TAC. That is joinhoney.com slash tag. We thank them for the support. We thank you for supporting the brands that support us here on the Angry Chicken. Um, and we also thank you for continuing to listen because we're about to talk about a lot of cards. Um, it is time, Hat, to do our best to have a free-flowing conversation about the new archetypes we think may be coming to Hearthstone with Forged in the Barons. Um, and, we, and as I kind of teased at the top of the show, we're going alphabetically, which means we're starting with Demon Hunter, which is probably the worst class to start with because of all of them, I think they're just, they're all over the place. They don't really have a clear theme beyond maybe Death Rattle. We'll figure it out. It'll be fun. We're just, we're going to vibe out about cards for however long the show takes. Um, and I don't have work tomorrow, so we'll be fine. We'll see how long this goes. But I will say, as a brief segue, my wife really likes spicy honey, hot honey on pizza. It's very good. Oh, okay, sweet. I'm a chili oil guy. I'm, I mean, I'm not opposed to chili oil. I will, I will enjoy a chili oil, but there's like a hot honey that she gets that's like, it's spicy, but it's honey, and it's really good on pepperoni pizza. Mm, okay, all right. I'm going to find some of this, and I will report back to you at some point. Yes, I bet you can use honey to save money on the honey. <laughs> so Death Rattle Demon Hunter, do you think this is going to work? Do you think it's going to work? There's, there's so many cards with Death Rattle... Uh, on them or 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 uh, a, a type of death rattle synergy or in this case both with with tusk piercer a new weapon that they're getting it's a one mana one attack two durability rare demon hunter weapon that's uh death rattle draw death rattle minion so it's a death rattle with death rattle synergy okay so hi chad so <laughs> the so okay Here's what I like about Demon Hunter. Year one Demon Hunter. Very, very clear identity. The identity was good at doing damage and drawing cards. And then they looked back after you're like, those are really good things to do in a card game. Why don't we let everybody have a shot? And then we have to figure something else out for Demon Hunter. And they clearly haven't figured it out yet. The class is six years younger than all the other classes, which have had plenty of time to bake in the oven. But I... At the same time, this feels like maybe there are more cards in the mini set or maybe there are more cards over the rest of the year, but there is definitely like a bunch of cards they want us to play together, but I don't see a deck yet. I see I see a bunch of cards that all have Death Rattle on them, and then also the Sigil, which are super cool, and I really like playing Vengeance Demon Hunter in, in WoW. Um, they did two of the Sigils, including one that you said was going to happen. I was like, there's no way they do that, and then they did that. Uh, yeah, Sigil of Silence, zero mana. Uh, at the start of your next turn, silence all enemy minions. Would you look at yeah. that? You you said they might do that, and I was like, no, they're cutting back on silence. There's no way. Well, there was one way. I, I, I guess I wasn't really thinking about this before, but I do think the one turn delay, it makes it a lot less, it tilts me a lot less, at least in theory thinking about this card in play. I have enough warning. I'm not going to be like, oh, you you got me. I played right into your silence. Because now I know when the silence is going to happen. Yes, but a zero mana setup card that you literally cannot stop. Imagine if there was no way to stop a cane and it didn't cost any mana. Like if you were defending yourself through taunts and you know they have lethal in hand and then they play Sigil of Silence and say go, what do you what what do you do on your turn? Play some more taunts because you know they're getting silenced. What do you do? Concede. Well, move on, move on to the next game. They might not have it, so you should say go. Well, hey, in your then, hypothetical, you said that I know they have lethal. But how did you know? 
but you you told me I was just going with your hypothetical. I'm on to you, Garrett. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> Listeners, this is an abject lesson. You never really know. Play it out. Play it out. Don't concede. Yeah, Celestalon is back in chat, so uh, get ready, podcast listeners, for, for notes by Celestalon via either my voice or or hats, which we are big fans of. Celestalon says sigils often don't do anything and are still worth it. Oh, yes. Both sigils are awesome. I'm hoping that both Misery and Chain see insertion in a future update because... I really liked all those abilities in WoW, and I imagine that they'd be a lot of fun in Hearthstone as well. Um, and these take up a secret spot, and but you see what they are because Demon Hunters have no secrecy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a cool design. It's interesting. I do worry about that feeling of impending dread of seeing that sigil of silence when I'm at like 10 life with a bunch of taunts and be like, oh, I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I mean, I've gotten used to that feeling when facing down a Demon Hunter, though. So... Uh, mm. at, at least uh, in in that way, uh, nothing's changing. <laughs> but so, but. what's your vibe on the cards that we've seen so far? We've got like we've got Kurt Russell over here. That's like a weird restless mummy sort of thing. And we've got a token maker. Then we've got death rattles. And then we've got like a lone slice. Is what I'm calling Fury. 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 Oh, which the is card Fury. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, rank sorry, spell. Yeah. Yeah, it, it lone slice. That's not a bad way. Yeah, the whole give you hero plus one attack. Um, remind me, is it just a one damage upgrade as it actually upgrades? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's so it starts three at plus two attack and goes up to four if you have ten mana. Um, yeah, that's that's fine. I do think there. I think there's right on the cusp of maybe enough death rattles. Like there's four death rattle synergy cards between tusk piercer, razor bore, uh, which is the two mana two two death rattle summon a death rattle minion that costs three or less from your hand. And then they have another one of those that's Razorfin Beastmaster, which is a three mana three three, which is death rattle summon a death rattle minion that costs four or less from your hand. And then we're also getting legendary Death Speaker Blackthorn, which is seven mana three six battle cry summon three death rattle minions that cost five or less from your deck. I, I think we're on, we're on the edge of death rattle being a thing in Demon Hunter. I don't think there's enough here. Unless I'm like really discounting what's available in the neutrals, but I don't. I've, I've tried. There are a couple cool am. cards like Renowned Performer is interesting from the previous set, and there are. This is definitely something they want us exploring, but I don't really see the major payoff yet outside of the seven drop. And even then, we're getting back a bunch of two twos and three threes and four fours. Um, I like that they are exploring new directions for Demon Hunter and trying to figure it out, and that they didn't just stick with what they came up with the first time because what they came up with the first time was thematic. And compelling, and also really, really hard to balance and feel individual. These cards kind of feel like regular huntery, but if they keep pushing them, then they'll feel more demon huntery. And there could be something here. We're just not used to it yet. But I'm glad they didn't just stick with what they tried the first time and say, "Well, it's out of our hands now." Yeah, so all of that is like I'm hopeful for Death Rattle. I don't think it's going to work right out the gate. Um, my takeaway is a, is with a card we talked about last week. I, I think I am more afraid of Sigil Flame than anything else that Demon Hunter is getting. Yeah, Sigil of Flame is really, really good. Uh, I think that it will be often used on turn five into turn six Illidari Studies Skull, Skull of Gul'dan on a clear board. And that's a sequence that I envision not being thrilled about if it continues to happen a bunch of times. Yeah. yeah I, just, I just can see the future. And it's it's a really good setup for a skull turn. And for audio listeners, if you forget what Sigil Flame is, it's the two mana uh, at the start of your turn, deal three damage to all minions, uh, which we talked about last week. We just talked about Sigil of Silence, uh, which is zero mana. Um, but, you know, it, all of your concerns about, like, ending the game, um, and obviously the, the com combo you just talked about as well, combo aside, just Sigil of Flame, just the way it's going to let the Demon Hunter take advantage uh, of of a turn essentially potentially taken off just just concerns me unless you're like i don't know playing into a turn that all they were going to do was use target removal out of hand anyway like is the only time i think that it kind of breaks even uh, it's if you play it against a priest on turn two when all they were going to do was heal your face and say greetings then sure whatever um by the way i don't think priest is going to be that anymore no, I don't think so either. But as a hypothetical, I know that everyone would identify with the idea of priest emoting and healing your face. Like, that's that's a known thing. Um, it's 
Sigil of Flame says we're all gonna gonna sit down and chill for one turn, and it's at a very early developmental point in the game. And when you compare it to something like Flame Ward, Flame Ward, if you want to beat Flame Ward, you attack in with your minions. The Flame Ward pops, you lose your stuff, and then you play more stuff. If you see a Sigil of Flame, you cannot make it go off faster. You know what's coming. Anything that has less than four health, if you play it that turn or if it's already in play, it's just going to go away, and you cannot alter the course of your own destiny. So it's yeah. really powerful tempo management if it hits. Now, if you whiff in the breakpoints, then it's not that great. So it's it has some failure cases, but I think it's going to be a really strong uh, Demon Hunter tempo tool. I agree entirely. Um, so let's move on and talk about Druid then. Uh, which it sure looks like there's a taunt druid theme going on. Yeah, there's taunt nature and kind of beasts. There's always kind of beasts, I feel like, for, for druid, and I wouldn't call this heavy enough to make me think that it's going to be like a, a new kind of earth-shattering archetype. I'm, I'll be happy to be wrong because I've always really enjoyed beast druid in the past, but uh, there's definitely a taunt theme going on we have a mark of the spike shell two mana give a minion plus two plus two if it has taunt add a copy of it to your hand we have razor main battle guard two mana two three the first taunt minion you play each turn costs two less uh, battle guard itself does not have taunt but it is a taunt synergy card we have the super important by the way because the turn that you play it you can then play a taunt that same turn for two less mana so you, you can play this in turn three and also jam a dreaming drake or something right then there's also Plague Maw the Rotting, a new legendary 4-mana 3-4 in Druid that reads, after a friendly minion with taunt dies, summon a new copy of it without taunt. Um, and then we already talked about Druid of the Plains, which is that 7-mana uh, 7-6 seven seven rusher with the Frenzy trigger where it transforms into a 6-7 Coda with taunt. Taunt. Taunt Druid. That's, that's the set. Taunt. So Drew, Drew of the Plains would yeah. not get any benefit discount from Battle Guard, but it would still work as a trigger for Plague Mother rotting, you know, after Friendly Minion when Taunt dies, as long as it has Taunt when it dies. The second half would. If you if you trigger the Frenzy, then yeah. If you have the Rush version and it just takes six, then it wouldn't come back. Yeah, exactly. Right, like yep. as long as it has Taunt when it dies. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is one of the more overt themes I think we've seen. Now, there is the other legendary Guff Rune Totem, um, and he doesn't take any Guff. And he's a three mana two for after you play a nature spell, give another friendly minion plus two plus two. I will point out Lightning Bloom is a nature spell. I believe Innervate is two. Uh, so that's. That's going to be something that you should expect to see. Yeah, because Lightning Bloom is still in standard. Oh, for another year. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. And, uh, yeah, Guff is, is it's going to be large. It's going to be a big old rune totem. Um, and that's kind of the nature sub theme. And then also, there's this one other card that the universe is talking about Celestial Alignment. What a weirdo. Seven mana, epic spell. Set each player to zero mana crystals. Set the cost of cards in all hands, in all decks, to one. Card's weird. I, to me, I look at this and I think this is kind of classic big druid, right? That you're just, you're banking on the fact that my one mana cards are more valuable than your one mana cards. To the point where you say, I'm going to play this and then not do anything else with my turn. And then you can play your one mana card first and I think I'll still beat you. But also, you can still play your Umbral Owls the same turn, or your Clockwork Giants, which is back in standard. That's uh, the 8-8 eight, eight in core set that it reduces in cost by how many cards are in your opponent's hand. You set that to one, and then they have one card in hand, then it costs zero, then you play it. Uh, but it's it's just such a strange card as well. It's setting both players to zero mana crystals is funky. So it's an unusual thing. It's a cool design, um, but just in terms of like how the Druid wants to use it, this seems just very classic Druid design to me. Um, or I guess it's classic druid outcome to me. Maybe design is the wrong way to frame that. Yeah, the design is is very modern, but yeah, the the goal here is get mana so I can get more mana so I can do big things. And then when it gets going, like the if you survive the turn you play this, and then you go like nourish for two mana crystals and play a bunch of stuff, then go nuts. Or you can play the upcoming uh, the neutral elemental that reduces the next elemental you play by one. 
and then your scrapyard colossus costs one minus one, which is zero. Nice scrappy. It, there are there are ways to do this. It's but it's also going to be a card that a lot of people are going to play on seven and pass the turn and then die to a rogue. <laughs> uh, and that rogue will probably be named Ridiculous Hat. Uh, it's uh, the Fifth Amendment protects me. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Gruff, Gruff does seem uh, d- does seem quite scary. Also, shout out to Pride's Fury for being uh, a very uh, looks like Reverse Lion King or something going on there. Uh, little little heart or art hat tip there. Uh, go look it up. You haven't seen it already, audio listeners. Um, Hunter cards. Let's get into it. Uh, to the surprise of everyone, hat. There's B synergy. I I did not see this coming. I I'm am. Sarcastic. I expected this. I'm like weirdly into wound prey. I I like getting excited about one cost cards, and uh, I like wound prey. Deal one damage. Summon a one one hyena with rush. I'm just like. Ooh. I used to play Elven Archer. This is better. It It is. It's better than uh, On the Hunt. Except On the Hunt used to summon a Mastiff, and Mastiffs are better than Hyenas, but the Mastiff did not rush. It went at its own pace. I like uh, Hyenas. Yeah. What, so, okay, walk me through why this excites you. I, I want to I get the real, the like, this direct line to Garrett Emotions. I just, I like that it's... Uh, two damage technically for one mana. One of that damage is targeted. The other damage is conditionally targeted as long as it's not face. I like that there is beast synergy with the hyena. Um, and I just like seeing power creep cards over old cards. Again, the Elven Archer reference. It's just the type of thing that I, this excites me from like a his, history of Hearthstone standpoint, I guess. Yeah, it's fun. This is, it's, it's not quite a spring paw, but it's pretty close. And spring paw was dope. Yeah. This is the type of thing that usually finds a home in, in Oh yeah, Hunter. we'll just play this. This yeah. this is just gonna be in Hunter decks. Yeah. yeah. This, this is, is playable. Uh and then uh there's Kolkar Pack Runner, uh two mana two three after you cast a spell, summon a one one hyena with rush. Uh <laughs> as Chad is pointing out, hey, you play Wound Prey with this, you get two hyenas there, hat. How, does that get you more excited for Wound Prey? I'm not saying I wasn't excited about it. I just wanted to understand your intensity. It's, it's Wound Prey. I, 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 get, I, like, I like being excited for just good cards. They're not crazy. They're not going to be featured in a Trollden video. I just like, that's a solid card design, and I'm going to play that card. That's where I go, ooh, yeah. Well, and that's kind of the modern Hearthstone design philosophy, right? That's the entire, the entire reason that Corset exists is just take the cards that we were not excited to play and weren't excited to open and we're never going to put in decks and just like they can shuffle on to, to classic format yeah, and we and can just get better cards now. I mean, there's, there's going to be more bad cards, right? Like cards that are like objectively bad to play when compared to other cards that could get the slot. That's just part of card game design. That's always going to be a thing. But now we get to see like new questionably bad cards uh, that, you know, might be better, might be worse than what they're replacing. That that sort of thing. But anyway, I digress. Um, we also have uh, Tame Beast. It's a rank spell, two mana. Summon a two two beast with rush. Upgrades when you have five mana. Uh, and I do believe the upgrades are. Oh no, never mind. They double each time. So at rank two, it's a four four beast with rush, and at rank three, it's a six six beast with rush. And the the beasts become different. It is a crab, a scorpion, and a thunder lizard. Tavish been busy. You can see the tokens right there on the website. Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, they are looking mighty fine. And then there's a uh, Tavish Stormpike, the legendary that you just referenced in the art for all of those rank spells that we just rattled off, which is a three mana two five legendary hunter minion. After a friendly beast attacks, summon a beast from your deck that costs one less. Every beast we just rattled off, including the one that's just like summoned by Wound Prey, has rush. Beasts are going to attack in New Hunter. You're going to be summoning beasts. And Hunter has this weird spells matter and card drawing theme, which is really interesting. Uh, the So you look at Barack Kodobama, uh, and that's Battlecry, the 5-minute 3-5 legendary 
uh, draw battle cry, draw one, two, and three cost spell. You're kind of filtering stuff out of your deck. And the other legendary Tavish Stormpike, three mana, two, five after a friendly beast attack, summon a beast from your deck that costs one less. With the rush theme, you're kind of looking to just yank out cards from your deck based on some kind of cost condition. Both the hunter legendaries are clearly into the idea of what the cost of your cards is relevant. So we're going to filter the the cards out of your out of your deck based on the cost, and then you get to draw them. They said that every class was going to get access to some kind of card draw, and this is how Hunter's going to do it. I think it's interesting. Yeah, um, and uh, Streamlabs just uh, took a dump on my <laughs> my browser share. So uh, give give me a moment to fix this before we uh, before we move on. Uh, and for uh, production purposes, I pause the audio recording. Sorry, video folks, you're seeing this. Yeah, that's what's behind it. I haven't updated my image background in forever because uh, I haven't needed to because I usually cover it up with the browser. But XSplit's been pissing me off, so I switched to Streamlabs, but Streamlabs is also pissing me off because it is not nearly as user-friendly. <laughs> no, that's not at all what I wanted, you obtuse nightmare of a program. All right, I want a window capture. I'm sipping my tea. This is an yes, attempt chat. to fix the video delay. If there I is still the delay video delay, better. do not tell me. It's, no, it's, I, it's I, fine. I can great. accept positively no uh, issues at the moment. Am I spicy? What did I do? Are you spicy? What is going on? Chad said it was spicy. I don't I know. This. The, the person who oh, makes the when I spicy. click on a card, it changes the name of the window and... Oh, wow. That is bad design. Uh, stream labs. That is bad design. So if the name of the window changes, it's, it breaks, but it worked before it was working before it was. I saw it. I was yeah, there. Look, it's still working. It's working right now. It's working right now. Uh, what is that? I don't know what thanks, the hell Thanks, Code happened. Obama. It seemed to break when I was trying to turn off the cursor. Let's see if it, let's just see. Yeah, it breaks when I turn off the cursor, but I turn the cursor back on and it didn't matter. All right, now it's broken again. Well, how did I fix it? Damn it. Don't turn off the cursor ever again. Never doing it. We're just going to see cursors. We're just going to see cursors. Browser, add source, properties, changed it to... Nope, 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 I want... Oh, my God. Warsong Wrangler. Up, up, there it is. There Boom. it is. All right, yeah. so that's that, but that should fix the old one that's actually cropped correctly. Wow, what a night, what a hellscape. All right, not turning off their cursor. Where do we leave off? What, what was well, the last uh, thing you we should said? mark down what time it is right now? I'm just going to do it. I think it's interesting, is what you said. <clears throat> that sounds like something I would say. You were talking about the, the there's also the spell synergy. Yes. Do you want to come in on that? All right. All right. <laughs> so yeah, it's Hunter. I think a lot of uh, players, when they saw the core set, it had such a clear direction before and such iconic cards. And now I think that we got really efficient cards like you were talking about. I don't see as much of a super clear direction for Hunter to go in, but also all the Hunter cards seem like you could put them in the deck and they do what they want to do. So I, I am curious to see what the decks end up looking like, but the cards seem powerful, and it seems like there are meaningful deck-building distractions, or uh, meaningful deck-building decisions. And I think that maybe we'll see, like, Warsong Wrangler, which uh, discovers a beast in your deck and gives all copy of it, plus two, plus one. Fina was playing the super cool deck on the theory crafting streams with uh, True Aim Crescent and Trampling Rhino, where you just make a bunch of rhinos and then smash them all into something, and then they all go face. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that was uh, that was a, a, a that was a cool deck for sure. Um, so, like overall, it's like I, I don't know. To me, this feels very kind of kind of classic huntery outside of the spell stuff. We've had unique spell hunter stuff in the past, though. But I'm thinking of like proper spell hunter, um, which is and this They've is not been that. pretty creative with hunter like a bunch of times with uh, cube hunter and spell hunter, and they've been able to make hunter interesting for a long time. Uh, the past year, it kind of felt a little samey on the Highlander stuff, and Phase Stalker as well was just kind of a card you played in all the Hunter decks. So I'm looking forward to Hunter being interesting again. I know that a lot of 
fans of the class are worried because so many of the iconic cards got taken away. But I do think that if they keep designing cards that are this efficient, it's going to find something to do. It's it's Hunter. They always find seven things to do. Yes. Always. Even if those seven things stay the same for like a year. They, they always find multiple ways to, to make things work. So um, let's move down into Mage where... Um, so there's a bit of a sub-theme with Elementals going on through multiple points of the expansion. A little bit of that is here in Mage, but there's also like a very overt freezing theme going on. And some of it blends together um, with both Elementals and Freezing because Oasis Ally is a new secret for three mana that uh, summons three six water Elementals when friendly minions are attacked. Yeah, it's... Mage is kind of... It's, it's doing two things, right? We've got the hero power thing and we got the Elementals and Chill thing, right? Like, that's that's definitely the direction it's going is Elementals and Chill are kind of combined. Um and Varden Dongrasp, the new mage legendary, uh, kind of is more towards the freeze thing, but also just efficient minion design. Uh, I feel like they're trying to go with develop minions and freeze the board as a thing, which is going to be a lot harder with all of the good freeze cards rotating, but I'm glad that they didn't keep Frost Nova and Blizzard and Ray of Frost because that gameplay was not cool. No, ironically. no, it wasn't. Um, we're, we're getting Flurry, which is another ranked spell. Zero mana, freeze a random enemy minion. Uh, obviously, it upgrades, and at rank two, it freezes two random enemy minions, and at rank three, it freezes three random enemy minions. Um, we've got the Water Elemental coming off of Oasis Ally. Uh, then we've got a new legendary, uh, Varden Dawngrasp, four mana, three, three, Battle cry freeze all enemy minions. If any are already frozen, deal four damage to them instead. So if everything's frozen, you got yourself a, a flame strike attached to a body here. Well, yeah. old flame strike. It's it's ice lance every enemy minion. Right? Do I so have to anything... start thinking about flame strikes damage in a different? I do. Yeah. Oh, I hate you do. that. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. It's. Old flame strike back in my day. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's an old it's an old flame strike, and at some point I'm gonna have to explain to people that hey, back in the day flame strike was four damage. Do we right. have is there another spell that deals four to everything? Gotta be something. No. Spell damage plus one hellfire. <laughs> that that doesn't yeah. It's, it just does a little spell damage plus one hellfire, except it doesn't go face or hit your own stuff. That rolls right off the tongue. It's the first place my brain went, Hat. What, 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 yes. what do you want from me? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's Chaos Nova. It's a Chaos Nova. It's a one-sided Chaos Nova. This brave new world is going to take some adjustment. I don't Thank remember you, Chaos Nova. Oh, that's right, because Demon Hunter had better things they could do than four damage to all minions for five mana. Zephyrus found it. <laughs> Zephyrus found Chaos Nova. You're right. You're right. You are correct. My bad. My bad. Yeah. Heard... So, anyways, Varden Dongrasp is a chill person that ice lances all enemy minions. So, if any minion was already frozen, it takes four. And if it wasn't frozen, it's frozen now. But it's not as though if one frozen enemy minion exists, they all take four. It's just it checks per minion. But it's also a, a just a really efficient card. Listen, Hack, also, you, you need to cool it. With the cold puns. And also, Mage is not where efficient minion design is happening. Shaman and Murlocs are where efficient minion design are happening. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a Murloc pun, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. You reeled me in. Oh, no yeah, I, I gotta keep you on the hook, man. Yeah, yeah that's, why, that's why you're a chum. Appreciate don't, it. Don't bait me. Yeah, uh... All right, so should we just end the show here? <laughs> we should end the show here, yeah. Yeah, it's over. That's the end of that. <laughs> That's the end of that. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, uh, so Varden seems cool. The new freezing design seems cool. Did you mention Rhyme Tongue? That's the three mana, three, four after you ca uh, cast a frost spell, summon a one, one elemental that freezes. We talked about that last week, right? I don't think think so but maybe it's hard to keep track man there's so much it stuff is. going it, on it is a lot but there's a lot of freeze no I, no we didn't we talked about reckless apprentice last week right 
Yeah, That's we right. talked about. You're correct. We yeah, only we... did the legendaries and then a few cool cards, and Reckless Apprentice one of those cool cards. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of new ways to freeze going on. Um, the other elemental that was in here that I think is more curious for a neutral elemental that we're getting in the set um, in Mage is Arcane Luminary. It's a three mana four three elemental, and it uh, cards that didn't start in your deck cost two less, but not less than one. Um, not sure Mage wants to go down the same elemental theme uh, that uh, everyone got to see if you watched the reveal stream because there was an elemental Murloc Shaman played. But um, again, there's just a little bit of an elemental sub theme going on with Barons that I wanted to point out. Uh, the other card we haven't talked about in Mage that I'm personally really excited about just because I love card draw is, uh, where is it for the viewing public? Where'd it go? Why can't I find refreshing spring water? Oh, there it is. Bottom row, second yep. left. Yep, yep, yep. Four mana, draw two cards, refresh two mana crystals for each spell drawn. Now, this is not spell tutoring. It's not guaranteed to draw you spells. But if you do, uh, you refresh two mana crystals for each spell drawn. So if you draw two spells, this is free. Yeah, it's... Uh, even if you just hit one spell, it's still two mana draw two cards, which is a great deal. And if you hit double spells, uh, it's cutting glass, and that card's good. So yeah, if you yeah, hit two, if, if you hit two spells, I will be cursing at you and you're going to, you're going to know, you're just going to feel it. You're going to be like, mm, my opponent is angry. So if I build a deck with 30 spells, then you are going to curse me, even though that was guaranteed to happen. Well, only if you win. Okay. I'll retroactively go back and, and be unhappy, but, um, I love card draw. This is a, this is. This is a good card. <laughs> this is some good is. card draw. In a, First time I read it, I thought it was only refresh one mana crystal per spell draw. And I was like, all right, if I hit one spell, it's an arcane intellect. Why am I excited? Then I read it again. And I was like, oh, that's better. That's why you're excited. Yeah. Yeah. That is why you're excited. Um, and I'm not done talking about mage yet because Mordresh really came into focus. So we already talked about Mordresh and we talked about Reckless Apprentice. Mordresh is that new 10 mana, 10, 10 uh, legendary that uh, deals... 10 damage to all enemies if you've dealt 10 damage with your hero power this game. And then we talked about Reckless Apprentice, which fires your hero power at all enemies. But we also now have seen Wildfire, which was revealed this past week, which is a two-mana spell and mage that increases the damage of your hero power by one. Permanently. And it, it's an epic hat. How many epics? Remind me how many epics I can put in my deck. Uh, Two? Yeah, so I could do this twice. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> There's some good pantomiming going on. Um, also, count. also your mage, you might just find even more of these. Yes, like with the rune door, which the two mana deal to summon a spell. Um, yeah, it, this this could get uh, goofy, get pretty goofy. It. Really? And Mordresh feels trivially easy to activate if you get this going? Yes, absolutely. Because even if you do it once, that's two damage. Reckless Apprentice, fire your hero power to all enemies. If there's four minions on board, you're done. If you've wildfired more than once, that goes down drastically. On top of just, you know, playing the game. You, you could just be pinging the whole time and get there. There's um, Hero Power Mage is something I'm really excited about. Can we call it Ping Pong Mage? Sure. Why not? Cool. All right. We decided. Thanks, everyone. I was trying to think Appreciate of anything you. fire related that starts with P and I am coming up blank. Uh, oh, boy. And preferably one syllable. Yeah, I just was thinking of ping and then I like ping pong and then here we are. There it is. There it is. Ping pyro, mage. Which kind of is because you're pyroing with Mordresh. I'm sorry, we already settled on ping pong. Okay, do you prefer pyro pong? The tribunal has closed. Let's move on. Okay, great. We have too much to talk about. Paladin is up next, and uh, Secret Paladin is back on the menu, I think. Paladin just got a bunch of cards that are really efficient again, like we talked about with the other classes, but these are in... It's, it's, I think, more clear with Paladin than any other that what they did with the set is they went to WoW and they looked at all the specs and they said, how can we put each spec in Hearthstone? Because we've definitely got Holy Pal and we've definitely got Ret Pally and we've definitely got, uh, uh, what's the third one? What's the other Holy? 
Holy ret and protection. The, the retribution protection. Yeah, protection. we definitely got prot pally. Yeah. 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 Um it's it just seems good, right? And we're not losing any of the like the Librum cards. Like those are staying in. That started with Ashes of Outland. Yes. We're losing all the pure cards except Urel, which was released a year later for some reason. That does seem strange, and we're not getting any new pure cards. Not yet. Not with this expansion. That's true. We could get we could get new pure, but it seems strange to me if if Urel is only around for one more year that they wouldn't add like more pure paladin cards in the first expansion of the year. Well, the mini set is still in two months. Wait, oh, that's I I forgot know. about mini sets. Remember how there's a uh, three more cycles of card releases every year now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we got to figure out a better way to do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're actually only an hour into the show. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be good. We'll be good. We're going at a good clip. We're going at a good clip. This is why we don't talk about every card in order. It's a, it just, it doesn't flow. The conversation doesn't flow. Um, anyway, uh, I'm very excited about all the secret stuff that is going on, starting with a card that. Uh, isn't secret, but is going to draw you secrets, which is Knight of Anointment. That's a one-mana, one-one battle cry, draw a holy spell. And, uh, well, it might draw you some secrets. Are any secrets holy? I should uh, check yes. this ahead of time. Reckoning is holy, and I believe... Uh, God, the new one, Reckoning is holy. I believe Avenge is also holy. There There's are a so- bunch of holy secrets. Here's what happened when I was prepping this, is I went and checked, and I saw that there was a holy secret, and I just... I, for some reason, my brain went, it's one of the new ones. It's not. <laughs> Galifix Savior is not a holy spell. Nope. Gallic- and Noble Sacrifice is not a holy spell either. That is it's, true. Yeah. The general idea is that if you look at the art, you should get an idea if it is a if it belongs to a spell school. Um, and something like a Noble Sacrifice of of the, the brave man jumping in front of you to save you, it's not magic, right? That wouldn't be a spell in WoW. It's just a thing that happens. Uh, so generally, you should get a rough idea if something is magical or not. Uh, I don't know. Knight of Anointment, I think, is a great card to highlight as to how different the design philosophy is now. A year ago, this would have been add a random holy spell to your hand or discover a holy spell. And now it is draw a holy spell. You get the card that was in your deck that you wanted to play. It's The games are going to get a little more consistent because you'll be able to target draw more. But also a game being more consistent is not necessarily a bad thing until it gets to the point that it's samey like how Gen and Baku were. And I think that we're not anywhere near that level of consistency yet. Right. You're you're still going to have to find this card. And you, depending on how the deck is built, you may draw a different holy spell from game to game. Um, And it's not like in Mbaku where it's just like, start the game more powerful because you did a thing. Uh, It's, I'd like this a lot. And and we haven't, I'm surprised we haven't gotten, we haven't said this yet, but this feels like a magic card. Um, And I like that. Like in that, design that the more consistency thing because there's no random generation in magic I suppose that's true it's my relationship with magic is a little bit more complicated um i think this is more like this feels an evolution of what they wanted og hearthstone to be um like i kind of see it with magic but magic also is a lot more like spend time fiddling and looking through your deck for the exact perfect card and the turns take forever and blah 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 this is just like the cards they're printing now are, they help you do what your deck wants to do without making it super random, but without making it the same thing every time. And I feel like if they had come up with the implementation of draw a specific thing in original vanilla Hearthstone, they would have used that instead of draw or random. But it was, you know, it's a brand new game. And they they found a really great mechanic with Discover. And then they ran with it. Maybe went a bit too far. And they ended up with a standard where it was a lot of discovering and generating and all that. And they said, all right, let's pull it back, but let's try and make sure that people are able to do what they want to do and play a bunch of cards because playing more cards is more fun. And this is where they landed. So far, it's it's my favorite iteration of Hearthstone Draw that I've seen yet because it's not too much. It's just right, but you get a card that you want to have. And I, I like drawing cards that I want to play. Yeah, I, I, I do too. And, and the fact that it's like from my deck is the thing that just makes me feel very MTG-ish. Um, and it's not the only card that. like this. We've seen a lot of that. 
as you've mentioned. This seems this is really pulling back on Discover in a way that I like. I like Discover. I think it's a good, a really good design, and it makes sense to me that they really went hard with it for a long time. Um, but like looking at the overall design of this set, like I am really excited because it seems like it's going to be consistent with how I wanted the deck to be. So I, that that that's the type of thing that makes me excited in a card game. I think that Standard will probably feel like a different era of Hearthstone in addition to a different format. Like, it'll feel like something significant has changed in how we engage with the game in that first month. And I think they want that to happen. That each year when the core set rotates, when the first set uh, of the year rotates in and the entire previous year rotates out, you can it's a palpable, tangible difference. I mean, I'm really excited to, to see what it's like. See me, I was riding my mute button. Yeah. Um, so let's move into actual like secret talk for Paladin because there's notable secret stuff happening. Um, Galloping Savior is the new secret, one mana because it's a Pally secret. Uh, after your opponent plays three cards in a turn, summon a 3 4 steed with taunt. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll take a 3 4, a delayed 3 4 for one mana. I'm into that. Yeah. It's a, it's a good horse. I will uh, I will get in the way of what my rogue opponent is doing happily. This is definitely like if your opponent is pen flinging, put a horse in front of them. And oh, Jesus, they are they're going to be pen flinging still. You've yeah. made me glaze over and like consider my life decisions twice in the last like five minutes. Because I made you think about pen flinger. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. That was number two. Uh, Sword of the Fallen, two mana, one attack, three durability, paladin weapon. After your hero attacks, cast a secret from your deck. It's me, Cora. Your deck. What did you do, Cora? Why did you do this? Is it, uh, she said she did it. Oh, she, she said, said she did it. Okay, I missed that. I missed that. Uh, Cora, thank you. Is my response. I like this card a lot. You, they they really have to work to make secrets a thing that you want in your deck, and this is how you do it. Uh -huh. And I think that it's balanced out enough by usually the secrets aren't good enough as cards to play on your own in Paladin. But if you hit this on two, boy, it's going to be really good, isn't it? It's why we were all playing Face Stalker and Hunter. It's why we're playing Ankar. Yeah, it's uh, seems seems powerful if you have this on turn two. Yep. There's also North Watch Commander, three mana, three, four, battle cry. If you control a secret, draw a minion. Hmm, that curves pretty nicely from uh, turn two. Is there any way that you can play something on turn two to guarantee you have a secret on turn three? Maybe the uh, immediate previous card we talked about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, two and three is a curve. Huh. Does, yep. It does, it yep. checks out. You're yeah. good. Checks out. Yeah. Um, we already talked about Cannon Master Smythe. Or uh, Smith, Smith, Smith. Uh, why? Why don't you Smith. spell his best friend Wesson? Smith and Wesson. You could have spelled. Uh, all right, fine, whatever. If you spell it fantasy like, I'm gonna pronounce it fantasy like. Just FYI, uh, that was the legendary we talked about last week that transforms your secrets into three three soldiers, and then they go back to being secrets when they die. Um, so wondrous. I'm really, really excited about this new kind of mid-rangey secret paladin thing that's going on. Yeah, it's. I like that we don't have to curve to six, seven, eight. That we just have all the good cards in the early game when secrets actually matter. And Sword of the Fallen on two is going to be really, really strong. And uh, Carrial Rome will discount those holy secrets, and then you get to play them with Smith. And and it's yeah. I feel like this is going to be a thing. And there's also that neutral that whenever a secret pops, it gets bigger. It's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah. That one looks fun. I, I love this class so much. Um, and I'm going to be playing a lot more of it coming into Barons. Uh, and that, that just, that always makes it, uh, do you have that with rogue? Ever, have you, ever, I don't know why you would have it. Cause I feel like rogue always just works out, <laughs> but if you, do you have a fear going into every expansion where you're just like, is this it? Is this the expansion where they, they murder my favorite class? And that, uh, is definitely something that Paladin players and shaman players generally deal with. Priest players are kind of just like, why would anything ever be good? They're like the Eeyore of, of Hearthstone classes. Um, yeah, Rogue has been 
kind of difficult to be worried about because they just did all the people on team five like playing rogue and so they just keep printing prize plunders and secret passages and i'm like oh no what will they do oh wait you give me one and two drops to let me cheat mana and draw cards and kill things i'll be fine <laughs> Yeah, because I, I I have that I have that fear with Paladin, and uh, it doesn't look like justifiably I have... so. You should have that fear with Paladin. Well, when it's kind of died off, they deserved it in kind of a shaman sense. Like they were kind of boring post Secret Paladin, and it's like eh, you deserved it. I get it. I'm I'm thinking about the history of Paladin. Like, if you look back, I mean, in, in Classic, it was not really a thing. Then they printed Shotbot and Muster, or uh, Minibot and Muster, and like, okay, that was good. But for, for a lot of Hearthstone's history, it's just Paladin's been riding a few cards. I think it was interesting when Terum was around. Um, but then, like, Odd and Even Paladin would just, like, press the button and play the broken card. I, the direction that Paladin's going in the modern era, I think, is a lot more interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I like buffing, and it's always been risky in the past, and they found a way to make it a lot less risky. Um, so I dig it. I also dig what's going on with priests. It's very different. And as someone who has come around to res priest here at the 11th hour, we're on the precipice of them no longer being a thing. Um, I'm, I'm surprised like kind of how much I have, they've really piqued my interest of what the hell is going on with priests. It sure seems like a control variant of priest is coming back but it's coming back through minion damage instead of having a bunch of shadow words in your deck. It feels like this set for you. Wow. Players out there. It feels like this is the disc priest sort of thing that we're doing a lot of development and removal at the same time, like damage and healing kind of paired up, especially with that new legendary, which looks amazing. Zyrella, uh, battle cry is four mana four, four battle cry. If you've restored health this turn, deal that much damage to all enemy minions. That's totally a disc priest thing. I like my healing kills your stuff. Right, right. And, De- death yeah, through that healing. card looks crazy. Yeah. yeah. And and Joss and I have talked about like wanting to see De- disc more represented in Hearthstone before. And so I'm I'm really curious when she gets back how she feels about this. Um because I I don't think Joss has ever really been a huge priest player. I've I've had my stints. I'm definitely in one right now. Um Dragon Priest was another big one for me that I really enjoyed. But, um, yeah, this just looks like this just looks controlling. Like you talked about Zyrella is just going to be doing massive board damage. Potentially, uh, their rank spell is condemn, which is deal one damage to all enemy minions. Um, and then it, as it upgrades, it gets better for some reason. They're not linked. Yeah, it goes condemn up, is oh, there one is. damage, two damage, three damage. Yeah, yeah. It's one, two, three. Yeah. There it goes. There was some kind of thing going on there with the website. Um, Devouring Plague, three mana, uh, life steal, deal four damage, randomly split among all enemy minions. Bit of a, a avenging wrath bit going on there in my priest. It's so when you say control, I think when I think control, I think of like your plague of death priests, your mass res priests. But you look at the cards we're getting here. We're getting a two mana minion that develops and removes stats. We're getting a four mana minion that develops and removes their board. Uh, you get Priest of Anshi, which is a big 5-5 five, five taunt that becomes an 8-8 eight, eight taunt if you heal that turn. You get uh, Golden Shower Elemental, the 6-6 six, six taunt. Uh, you get Void Flare, which is the, I know what I said. You get the 4-mana 3-4, four, that uh, battle cry for each spell in your hand. You shoot a little missile out there. This is all about like playing stuff on the board from turns 3 through 7, and then probably putting an Apotheosis on it and hitting them. Control, I feel grindy and pressing the Galakron button and generating a minion every turn. This feels more like I want to put stuff on the board and kill your things while I play my things and then attack you. And it feels more mid rangey uh, than a lot of the pre strategies that we've seen in the past. I'm excited to play with these cards because it doesn't feel like that slow grind them out, heal and do nothing on turn two priest that we're used to. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very very different. It seems so much more active, right? Um, and, and it's getting, like, early game minions, so we're not going to do that just heal face pass on turn two anymore. We're probably going to be a Soothsayer's Caravan. Two mana, one, three at the start of your turn. Copy a spell from your opponent's deck to your hand. You know, that's interesting enough that <laughs> likely play it. Um, and I, I it's, 
I see in the notes here, you put Serena looks impossible to explain, but let's try and explain it because this is the other priest legendary Serena blood feather, two mana, one, one legendary priest minion battle cry, choose an enemy minion, steal attack and health from it until this has more. So it does it in what increments of one. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I know that when you play this on a bigger thing, it's like, it's like an Argent Braggart, kind of like this gets bigger and the other thing gets smaller until this is bigger. How the calculation works, I don't know. I don't know. I have seen a bunch of people try and guess at it. I know that it's been explained somewhere. I know that if you play this on like a, if you play this on a 3-4, then I think they end up with a 1-2 when you end up with a 3-3. Three, three. Something like that. That would, but I don't know the I, steps. I would assume it would take one from the attack, one from the health, one from the attack, one from the health. And, uh, and and stop with each once it is one larger. Because it says steal attack and health from it until it has more. It doesn't specify more of one or the other. It just says more. So I think you need both more attack and more health, and that's when Serena shuts off. All I know is that it's a shame that this card is coming in after Edwin rotates out. Because this would have been real nice against Edwin. For Priest, it would have been. Everyone else still has to deal with Edwin. I'm not saying Edwin should have stayed. That's not what I'm saying. I I have a golden Edwin. It sure Edwin. sounds like that's what you're saying. Many Edwins. No, 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 no. Edwin needs to get out. Edwin needed to get out a year ago. But but Edwin, I love you, buddy. You got to go. You got to go. Yeah. Celestalon so in the chat room is confirming it is separately for attack and health. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Serena's really cool design. Um, I haven't. I didn't see anyone play Serena, so I haven't seen the animation. I bet it is cool. Uh, yeah. All right, let's move on and talk about Rogue. I uh, made a couple references to Paralytic Poison throughout today's episode. That is a one-mana spell that Rogue is getting that gives your weapon plus one attack and your hero is immune while attacking. Which I Okay, just... so the poison's here. The issue that a lot of people have with Rogue and Standard now is that too many big weapons hit you in the face. If you have Paralytic Poison, you're intending for that weapon to hit minions. If this text is relevant, we'll probably be happier. Because it's better for rogues to try and control the board and prolong the game than end it immediately with big chunks of damage. And they just nerf Nitro Boost. So I imagine that this is what they want to happen. They want the weapon to be a board control tool to make things more interactive, as opposed to just playing this and slamming people in the face. Um, and they also made another poison, Silverleaf Poison, to mana give your, give your weapon after your hero attacks draw a card. You have to attack a bunch of times with this for this to be valuable. Now, there is the new weapon that grows with poison, and there is self-sharpening sword, which has four du durability, or assassin blade, which has five durability. You can play any of these and get value out of your poisons, but that means you're probably hitting minions and not face, and that's good. If these are used to go face a lot, then that's probably not the play pattern they're looking for. But that's why these are rewarding incremental value over time, as opposed to finish the game, finish the game, finish the game, like Nitro Boost was doing at one mana. Yeah. Yeah, did we mention? Did you mention Silverleaf Poison in there? If you did, I missed it. I apologize. I did, yes. Okay, yeah, that's the after your hero yeah. attacks draw card. Great. Uh, and then there's also the legendary Apothecary Hellbrim, which is a four mana, three, two, battle cry, and death rattle, add a random poison to your hand. So you don't necessarily be needing to be putting these poisons in your deck if you're running Apothecary. You still may need to contend with these poisons. Yeah, and th this is a little zero throwback. I like this card. I think it's cool. Um yeah, shout out to the localization team for making all of the cards be the same word in every language. Uh, good job, hard work. There are two cards I want to talk about. First, the other legendary. I want you to say the legendary's name because it's my favorite name in the set, if not ever. <laughs> that would be Scab's Cutter Butter. <laughs> <laughs> Which are you going to call him Scabby or Butters? I've been going with Butters. I do like Butters, but I think I would have probably just gone with Scab's. Like, I guess, I mean, Butters sounds great. Uh, you know, I'm probably going to call him effing Scabs is probably what I'm going to be calling him because Scabs is a four mana, three, three combo. The next two cards you play this turn cost three less. Because, you know, that's that's what that's what Rogue needed. I'm not actually excited about this card as a Rogue player. I think it's uh, I think it's very flashy looking. But the combo being at the beginning of this card's text makes it way less appealing. Because you got to go out of your way to do something first. 
and then you have to have the cards in hand to play with this, and it has to be at an early enough point in the game where the 3-3 matters. The original email they sent out with this card that we all got uh, this past weekend, Scabs was a 2-2, which means they definitely buffed him last minute in design, which means he was underperforming. Uh, I feel like this card, people see the cost 3 less and they think about Skull, but this doesn't draw you any cards. You have to already have the cards you want to play. I am, I am less excited about this. That is a very good point. Um, audio listeners, uh, FYI, if you haven't seen this card, a gnome has never looked cooler. Just FYI. Oh, yeah. I didn't know you could make a gnome like look so rad. Uh, it's, a, it's phenomenal, phenomenal art. Um, I think we both want to talk about, and the fact that this card takes up an entire page and in the notes itself after you had your way with it hat, I think we both want to talk about field contact. Three mana, three, two. After you play a battle cry or combo card, draw a card. You seem concerned. Why are you so concerned, Hat? Can you think of any really cheap battle cry that Rogue is playing right now that really likes drawing a lot of cheap spells that maybe the battle cry reuses itself? So also, during my lunch break today, Hat, I had yeah. I needed one more win to close out a quest. And one more win. I was like, all right, I'm just going to load up my res priest and go. I hit three rogues in a row. I lost all three of those games to pen flinger damage. Would it have made you feel better if each pen flinger also drew them a card? Uh, let me check. Uh, no, I'm starting to vibrate with fury. I am Skolomance Academy had four really, really strong neutral one drops in, uh, I'm going to list them all in order of power. Uh, pen flinger and broomstick are tied for first. I think tour guide is the third intrepid initiate is the fourth. Those are all neutral one-drops in Skull Mets Academy. Incredibly powerful cards. But printing Penflinger with a three-mana Auctioneer seems really questionable to me. And it makes me wonder how much longer Penflinger is meant to be in this world, that one-mana one-one. Uh, it just... It feels pretty abusable. And l you can just play this and Flinger and Shadow Step and just draw a card and get them both back in your hand. And then for one mana for each, just do it again next turn. It seems it seems like a lot of card draw and a lot of churn in a class that didn't really need help with that. But you just replace World Kick Master with this. And instead of generating random cards, you just draw the cards you put in your deck. Like, say, the new Wicked Stab, because they rotated Eviscerate to make slightly different Eviscerate. It's Wicked Stab is the rank spell. Two mana deal two damage. At, at five mana, it's deal four damage. At ten mana, it's six damage. So... If we're at 10 mana, you're getting Pyroblasted plus Penflinger. That's that's happening. Granted, the way we've been dealing with Rogue is killing them early, but... Yeah. But, <sighs> I mean, you have to now. I don't know. I, I like Rogue a lot. I've always been a Rogue player. I'm excited with the direction that they're going here, except Penflinger and Field Contact together feels like it's too good to not play, and I am concerned about the potential. Because I don't want to play Penflinger. I actually actively avoid playing Penflinger decks because I don't like the player burden of the constant clicking and APM and the math and all that. I, I think it's an unpleasant experience uh, with the amount of time we've had with the card already. About a year ago, we had a, a Heroes of the Storm developer on uh, our, my Heroes podcast, and he talked about the balancing act of things that make you feel salty but make the player you know, performing that, <laughs> like, for, like bringing that upon you, feel empowered and feel awesome. Like that, that constant balance of like, yeah, Perfect. someone feels salty, but someone also feels like a, like a, a champion and they feel empowered. Um, and he referred to when you go too far, he called it hitting the salt wall. And I look at rogue and I, and I see myself hitting the salt wall. And I think about, so the, the rogues that you played against today, the Penflinger rogues, how many turns did they rope? Probably a lot, because it's really hard to do all the math and figure out where all those pings are going. Like, you have to sit there and think. It makes the game go longer, even if the turns don't go longer. Like, even if there aren't more turns. And when you don't, it's probably because I'm now roping, because I'm trying to think how I don't die to Penflinger next turn, because I know they have it, because it's already come down and pinged me for three. Yeah, it's... I, I enjoyed Penflinger when it came out a lot. Uh, it's kind of worn out its welcome for me just in how I have to interact with the game when it's around. And I'm concerned on a power level front on how it works with Field Contact. Field Contact is a powerful card, 
but without a recurring one mana battle cry that rewards me for packing my deck with cheap spells, I think it wouldn't be a big deal. But that specific interaction is is I think the salt wall will will be erected for quite a few players there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that that does have me have me concerned. Um all this talk about pen and flinger too, and neither of us have mentioned that. I think it is legitimately the most obnoxious emote in the history of Hearthstone. Like the most obnoxious voice line when it comes down. And uh, I just don't want to hear it anymore. I think I think I, I could I could stand a lot more. I could stand another year of Penflinger if I could just like squelch it. I, I've I've got the winner. I'm pretty sure that it's uh, my jaws that bite my claws to catch. I'm pretty sure that's it. Just because the month where that was bad, it was really 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 bad, and you didn't hear it every click. It was once a game. You heard it for ten minutes, over <laughs> and over again. But I think Penflinger is is in that ballpark just because of the nature of the repetitive gameplay. Fair. Fair. Well, let's uh, let's move on then and uh, and talk about Shaman, which I'm just jazzed as hell because I love Murloc Shaman and Murloc Shaman is absolutely freaking lootly going to still be a thing. It's, it's still a bit of a niche deck at the moment. Um, we have talked we talked about uh, the the nothing, the no fin. I know it's supposed to be pronounced nothing, but I want to overpronounce the no and the fin. Um, but we haven't talked about a lot of these cards. Spawn pool forager, one mana, one two. Death rattle summon a one one tiny fin. Forager itself, Murloc. Tiny fin's caravan. Really excited about this card. Two mana, one three. At the start of your turn, draw Murloc. Tiny fin's caravan is not in and of itself a Murloc, but that's some cool. That's some gas to Murlocs, which have typically kind of been known to run out of things to play the caravans are a little sketchy because they're all nat pagels right you see they're all at the start of your turn because you remember old nat pagel at the end of your turn everyone just played it because you just hit the card um so these are watered down a little bit i'm gonna mute for a second Uh, that's quite all right they are they are you're putting your hope in uh your opponent to not you're, you're hoping that this survives a turn it is worth mentioning, yeah. mentioning that we already talked about nothing can stop us, and it gives your minions plus one, plus one. It gives an extra plus one, plus one to Murloc, so you will be buffing Tiny Finn's Caravan with your nothing can stop us. And I'm, I'm not sure how excited you are about dropping Tiny Finn's Caravan on curve. It's not the worst thing in the world, but you could also just drop it later when you actually need the draw, and maybe you're going to be comboing it alongside some board buffs. If you go first and you drop it on two and they can't kill it and it sticks for one turn, you're already happy. If it's six or two turns, you're thrilled. And also, the Matt Dixon art on this card is phenomenal. Well, it's uh, oh, it's so the precursor to Nothing Can Stop Us. Which also, I believe, is Matt Dixon art. It is. It is uh, 100% Matt Dixon art. Is Finja hiding in Tiny Finn's Caravan? I'm sorry. This is very visual. Uh, in the back there? Yeah, he's hiding in the back there. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes, because all of the Murlocs that are shown in the Nothing Can ha- can Stop Us uh, art are also on the caravan, um, in Tiny Finn's caravan. Uh, there's also Firemancer Flurgle. Two mana, two, three. After you play a Murloc, deal one damage to all enemies. This is the new legendary Murloc uh, in Shaman. Yes. Murloc Altruist. They did it. The mad lads did it. They, they were so preoccupied if they could, they didn't stop to think of if they should. I don't know. I think they should do it. Contro- like, I'm Some- getting board control with my Murlocs. What is happening? Let what- the Murlocs fight back. What is happening? And then there's Empower also... Power the Murlocs. There's also South Coast Chieftain, 2 mana, 3, 2 Shaman Murloc. Battle cry if you control another Murloc, deal 2 damage. I'm, it's And this this could go face, but it can also help me get through Taunt. It can help com- combo with Firemancer Flurgle to get through things or just control the board. Murloc looks mid-range. You get to you get to play cards that are not embarrassing on rate. They rotated out Underbelly Angler because you can't print good Murlocs while Underbelly Angler is in your format because then they just run away. So instead, they printed a a reasonable Murloc Zoo equivalent, uh, except it doesn't really have the card generation. So if your stuff dies, then then you're out of stuff. But if your stuff lives, then you kill them. And there's no war leader to worry about the giant burst damage. You have the no fin, of course, but it's not the same as like just jamming a war leader on three and then you just kill them in two turns. And let me tell you, crab rider stonks going way up right now. Mm. <laughs> I would invest in crab rider stonks. 
Uh, what, what's the, 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 do fish people want to go to the moon or do you want to go to the moon against the fish people, I guess? Is that what, I don't understand the words that you're ne- saying. Never mind. A, ne- never mind. Doesn't matter. Um, are there fish people on the moon? <laughs> Is that a thing? Uh, why did we send Neil Armstrong there? This is, I think, the first time I was excited about a deck that I saw played during a reveal stream, by the way. Because we also haven't talked about the elemental sub-theme returning in Shaman. And on the reveal stream, we just played an elemental Murloc Shaman deck that actually looks pretty rad. And I think might have, uh, might have legs. Even though half of the minions are elementals and they historically do not have legs. They might have tendrils of Maelstrom energy. Yes, they, they may. But um, Shaman is getting Irid Stormer, a three mana, two, five elemental with Battle Cry if you played an ele- elemental last turn, gain Rush, and win Fury. I'm interested in that. That is a lot of health on a three mana, on a three mana minion that can potentially get win Fury. Uh, they're getting Earth Revenant, a four mana, two, six elemental with Taunt, Battle Cry, deal one damage to all enemy minions, and Lily Pad Lurker, which I am. So excited about. It's a 5-mana 4-5 elemental and shaman. Battle cry, if you played an elemental last turn, transform an enemy minion, not a random one, an enemy minion, so this is targeted, into a 0-1 frog with taunt. This is hex on a stick. <laughs> vile spine frogger, vile spine hexer, we'll figure it out. This card's rad. Really great. Arid Storm were like, they put Menacing Nimbus, the 2-2 that uh, Battle Cry, you get a random elemental into your hand. They put that in the core set for Shaman. So you just go Nimbus and the Stormer, and then you're just like, that's that's a, that's an early game. Because a 2-5 Rush Wind Fury on turn 3 is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, there's also that new neutral that uh, discounts the, what, the, the next elemental you play by 1? The 1 drop, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's some elemental oh, so stuff going you can just play on. this on turn 2. You can just have two turn 2, 2-5 two, Rush Wind Fury. Board control. You have it, and if you they don't have anything for you to control, congratulations, you just get to start smacking on them. I think Shaman got a lot of really good stuff here. Um, and, yeah. like, we didn't even touch on the nature spell thing, because Brucon spell damage plus three, I know it has nature in front of it, but anything that says spell damage plus three, that's a scary amount of plus. Like, that's a, that's a plus three, you play this on turn five with a single lightning bolt, and that's a fireball. Like, it's... It's... That's a lot of stuff. It is. It is. It is concerning. Um, but again, nature spell. So uh, lava burst won't be getting the Rotated. bonus. Well, yeah, you, but there's other formats. There's other formats. It's true. Where it is, it will be alive and well. But good design nonetheless. I really, really like spell schools. Have I mentioned how much I like spell schools? And the design space. You have, but you should is, do it again. That has Garrett, what do you think in. spell schools? It's so good. It's so the uh, the design space that like the that that we have arrived at, thanks to spell schools, is really fascinating. Um, and I I just I just like it. I just like it a lot. Weapon schools when? Uh, I don't, how do we categorize weapons? Uh, chat room. I'm not I'm not sure about that one. Oh, you could do one hand or two hand. You could do like pole arms. Or oh daggers yeah, axes, or, swords. Yeah. That that's right. You're you're yep. absolutely correct. Yeah, we could. You could do weapon tribes. What would that even look like besides targeted draw and stuff like that? Ask the people to make the game. I, just, I don't know. I just I just talk on and, and record it. Sometimes. Yeah, Celestalon. Uh, this would be cool. Make it happen. That's that's there. We did our job. We did our job. And now we're going to do our job by continuing into Warlock, where there's this cool cards left in deck trigger theme that's going on. Um, so it, I, I don't know how excited I am about the legendary Miru F- Fireblade, five mana, five, five battle cry. If your deck is empty, open a portal that fills your board with three, two imps each turn. I, if my deck is empty, I'm not sure I'm stoked about three, two imps. I mean, I know how excited I am about this, but it's not, it's not a positive excitement. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but but Nehru aside, we have we have Baron Scavenger, which is a six mana six six with taunt, and it costs one while your deck has ten or fewer cards. And then we're also getting where is he? Blood Shard Bristle back, three mana three three, life steal, battle cry. If your deck contains ten or fewer cards, deal six damage to a minion. That is a lot of targeted damage 
attached to a, a three drop. And I, I realize you have to have 10 or fewer cards, but you're Warlock. You'll get there. And then there's also Altar of Fire, which I only mix in this because it's removing cards. Uh, it's just, uh, So Altar of Fire, one mana Warlock Fire Spell, destroy the top three cards of each deck. So this is also having to use, so this is also dropping your cards left in your deck count. So that's it's working you towards your triggers on your Bristlebacks, on your Nerus, on your Baron Scavengers. And Altar of Fire, I think, is the most competitively viable one of these cards because if you're in Wild and your opponent plays Lorekeeper Polkelt and then you play Altar of Fire and then they play Concede the Game, uh, and I think that will be just a very entertaining sequence. Um, in general, so uh, people have a lot of feelings about Ticketus and about cards being burned. Uh, this feels like an archetype that is designed for people that want to do the cool thing of burning their own cards and getting some payoff for it. I don't think it's competitively tuned right now. I do expect this to get more support in the mini set because of complicated mechanic. But as of right now, it feels kind of half finished. Unless you really like Warlock and you want to go on ladder and you want to burn all your own cards and then play some cool demon stuff, you can absolutely do that. But I don't think it's intended for this to be a major player on ladder from what I can see so far. Uh, and it's cool, it's interesting, but it's a lot of work for not a ton of payoff. Yeah. To, to me, Bristleback is the most interesting I like the targeted six damage. Um, but yeah, again, it, whatever, face, though. But you have to get to 10 cards. And it's just like, how impactful is that by that point in the game? Same with dropping a six, six for the cost of one. Um, There's got to be some really cool enabler in the mini set or something that we haven't seen yet. Because as of right now, we don't really have the tools to churn all that well. Like Ticketus only gets you so far and it costs more than all these other cards do. And Ultra Fire only gets you a little bit of the way there's got to be some other way because if you're just bulk drawing cards you don't need to care about your deck size because you've drawn a ton of cards by turn five or six or whatever you just play the cards and then you win the game because you have all these cards so there has to be some kind of thing going on that's coming up that makes this a little bit more fully realized as of right now if this is something that you want to do and you want to work really hard at it and you can make the deck happen it will happen but i don't think it's meant to be a competitive meta thing and not everything needs to be a competitive meta thing uh, but I just can't put together the pieces that we see right now and, and lead it in a cohesive direction. I uh, I agree. I agree. Um, not really sure what Warlock looks like come launch. I mean, we, the probably... cards from last year are still good, right? Like, And, and we get yeah. J-Rex. We get J-Rex. <laughs> we do. We do. Is it enough, though? I'm not sure. I mean, Zeus still good, too. Dark Lord's still around. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Always have Zoo, right? And they're getting Cabal Outfitter. Three, uh, three mana, three, three, battle cry, death rattle, give another random friendly minion, plus one, plus one. That's a Zoo card if I ever saw one. Yep. That's, uh, like, Zoo has support, and I'm sure someone will do something juicy with Tamsin Rome, uh, with, uh, what we talked about her last week, but just, like, duplicating shadow spells is really good and high value. I'm curious to see what people come up with here. It's not immediately obvious. But the mechanic that they're pushing that's kind of front and center in the cards we've seen so far, I, I think is, uh, it might be at odds with what Standard is going to be about, from what I can tell early on. That being said, if you view Nero Fireblade as a Chef Nomi, right, if you just have this as a Hail Mary, we've played this attrition deck, we're, we're slugging back and forth, neither of us have any cards, if your last card is infinite 3-2 imps for the rest of the game, that's pretty good. So maybe it's kind of like this attrition uh, safety net. They, they, yeah, they've started to make this work before, though, and it just it just hasn't. It just hasn't gotten there. But, but I don't know. I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll see. I, that's a good point. That's a good way to frame it for sure. Um, it's just the 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 if your deck contains ten or fewer cards, like when I saw them, like that is a cool trigger. I it can't is. wait to see if your deck has fifteen or fewer, or if your deck has twenty or fewer cards. And they never came. I, like the first one of these I saw, I was expecting variations on how many cards needed to be in my deck, and there aren't. All of them are. 10 and then there's Nehru, which is empty. So yeah. And, and I should clarify as well. Nomi has worked in the past. And so like this could work. I just, I want to see some, some warlock minions, some cheaper warlock minions that burn cards when you play them, like burn your own cards. And I want to see some cards that if you would burn this card, add it to your hand instead, something like silverware golem, but not in play. I want to, okay, I wasn't, I wasn't talking about Nomi, by the way, I was talking about nether portal off of Lakari sacrifice. It never works. Oh, 
It, well, okay. Lakari sacrifice had other issues. It had a pretty big was, one in that the reward was garbage. And also that throwing away your cards isn't usually the best way to win a game of Hearthstone. Uh, well, it's discard, so it can be, but they forgot to design the meta for discarding as a warlock. But you've discarded all your cards. Can I offer you a couple imps in this trying time? Ex exactly. Exa if you can't tell, I really, really love Discard Warlock, and Discard Warlock was bogus bad when that came out. It was so disappointing. It's okay. It's really good now. It's a it's major, really good major, now. They major, figured out. major, major letdown for me. But anyways, uh, all right, let's, let's start to bring it home. Let's start to bring it home, Hat. You, you doing okay? I'm doing, I'm doing great. Let's all go. right, let's go rad, go. rad. Warrior is, uh, is up next. Uh, it sure looks like Frenzy Warrior is a thing. Because um, we've got uh, Warsong Envoy at one, one mana, one three. Frenzy gain plus one attack for each damaged character. We have Whirling Combatant, uh, four mana, two six. Battle Cry and Frenzy deal one damage to all other minions. And then we have Overlord Sourfang, seven mana, five four. Battle Cry, resurrect two four. Friendly Frenzy minions deal one damage to all their other minions. And I forgot to mention Sour Fang is legendary. If you're not a WoW nerd, you probably, if you are, you probably assumed. Okay. Not only is he legendary, he's a legend. And also, moment of silence for Sour Fang. But he's alive and well Thank in you Hearthstone. Sacrifice. Yes. And also, the cinematic in WoW chills. All right. Uh, also, important note in Sour Fang. Uh, so it says resurrect two friendly frenzy minions and then deal one damage to all the minions. The whirlwind does hit the minions you resurrect. So they, their frenzy immediately triggers as soon as they come back. Yeah. And so the, the two new ones we just talked about, Warsong Envoy and Whirling Combatant, they both survive. One has three health, one has six health. You're getting that effect. And then Whirling Combatant, if that comes back, its frenzy trigger is deal one damage to all other minions. So it will then trigger another round of frenzy. It'll 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 go around the world again, the world again, yes. Um, and Sourfang again a year ago. It summoned two random frenzy frenzy minions. Now it's resurrect. Warrior seems weird with the res mechanic, but it, think of it as you're you're generating two minions that you know that you want to bring back. You have more control over the effect, and your opponent can predict it more. So it's. It's not resurrection so much as curating the pool of generation, which I really like this design, even if it feels a bit weird to see the word resurrect on a warrior card. Thematically strange, but it's really, it's just the best word for what it's doing. Yeah. Um, it, does, it does seem weird, but eh, just think about it like it's a warrior, like there's these minions, they were, they were on the brink of death on the battlefield, and the warrior's like, no, come on, does rallying cry, gets everyone to fight one more time. It's fine. Sour Fang was good at that. He was very good at that. He just couldn't rally his own corpse. Too soon. Is it? Weren't you there for the ding dings? Did the ding dings not not stir your heart? I I, I was I was pretty mentally checked out from BFA story at that point. I don't know if you know. I got a new uh, statue of Sylvanas behind me, and I I may like her a lot, and may not have loved where they took her in BFA. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, shoot. Um, sorry, my camera has bokeh, and you can't really... She's very blurry at the moment. After, after the show, chat room, after the show, we'll do show and tell. Um, yeah, okay. That was so cool, by the way. Ugh, dude. <laughs> dude. Yeah, yeah. After show, everybody. Um, yeah, uh, I like these. These are good cards. Frenzy seems like such a freaking cool uh, mechanic that I, I really do think has Hearthstone legs. Like... I think this is going to work. I think I don't think we're going to be like, oh, hey, Frenzy, remember that weird thing that we never played, like uh, Inspire? We're going we're gonna to play some Frenzy cards, and it's not just going to be Samoro, even though I think well, Samoro is really, really good. Inspire was a mechanic that's six years old. So, yes, they've, they've gotten better at it. Then they've gotten better at making cards. But also, I think they just found a really rich vein of design space with Spellburst with one-off effects one-off effects that aren't battle cries and death rattles that middle ground of how can we make something that happens once but the both players have have agency over when that happens really really rich space to explore and i'm glad they're doing it because this is 
enraged Spellburst, and I think that Spellburst, as a general mechanic, we're going to see variants of it for a long time because it's really cool to play and lets both players be a part of deciding how cards work. If it's just a battle cry, you don't get to pick anything as the as the player in the receiving end. It just happens. And if it's a death rattle, usually it's the player that plays the card you don't get to pick when it happens. And Frenzy and Spellburst have kind of this territory in the middle. I hadn't thought about it that way, but that's, yeah, you're making some really good points. Um, I, I think... Just at the, we're rounding the corner here on on kind of being at the end of our new card talk, and uh, if there's just like one major theme from all of this, it's just that Hearthstone's design space has gotten really cool, and with the core set with spell schools, like they've really, really like I feel like really opened the space for themselves. And when I when we when spell schools were announced and when they talked about the core set. That's where my brain went. I'm like, boy, this really opens them up to go nuts with design. And and I'm not disappointed. They have delivered on my hopes after hearing about those those two major changes to this game. So, uh, yeah. And then, what else? Oh, you want to, you want to talk about Kazakis. So, our buddy, our buddy Chad, who you may have heard about in the show before. He's uh, on Twitter, at Celestalon. Uh, he shared with us the specifics of how Kazakas works. All right, so first of all, you pick a size. You got 1-1, one, one, you got 5-5, five, five, you got 10-10. 1-1 ten, ten. One, one costs 1-5, 5-5 costs 5. That's, five, 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 five. that's five, how much they cost. Ten. Yep. That's how much they cost, yes. And remember the restriction, it's a 4-minute 3-3. Three, three. Your deck can have no 4-cost cards in it. Now, if you play other 4-cost cards and you draw them first, you're fine. If you play, like, Librams, if you play, say, Librum of, of Judgment, it's a 7-mana Librum, right? and you play an Aldor Truth Seeker, and you play an Aldor Attendant, and then you play this card, Kazakas not going to work, because your Librams are four mana, so be careful about that. Cards that change costs in your deck will actually turn this off. But, after you choose a size, step two, you choose an herb. You can be Rush, Taunt, Divine Shield, Lifesteal, Stealth, or Poison. They all have cool wow names. See on uh, uh, on Twitter if you want to see what they all are. And then the second herb is an active thing that happens. Give your other minions plus one, plus one, plus two, plus two, or plus four, plus four. Summon a copy of this. Freeze one, two, or all random enemy minions. Deal three damage to one random, two random, or all enemy minions. Spell damage plus one, plus two, or plus four. Or draw one, two, or four cards. And then finally, you have to add the secret ingredient, which is love, the most important ingredient. Chad was very insistent that I said that. Uh, These are really efficient abilities. There are two six herb pools, so you're actually pretty likely to kind of see one that you want. If you're looking for one of or one of three, you're really really likely to see them. That is a uh, really cool design, like kind of exceptional. Uh, it's going to be also a really clear choice because you notice. I think this is very intentional. A lot of the mercenaries in the set are four mana legendaries. You're going to have to make your choice. Do you want Kazakus? Or do you want to hang out with Scab's Cutter Butter, the, the bad egg in town who hangs out behind the school and smokes cigarettes during lunch break? You got to decide. <laughs> you got to pick. Uh, no, Kazakus. Way, way more, way more than, than Scab's. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. It's, it's, all right. Well, me and Butters are going to be over on the other side of town. You best watch yourself if you come over here. Also, th- th- there's nothing cool about smoking hat. No. Come on. Come on. All right, doing? you're right, you're right. I'm nothing just thinking cool of, like, Grease, like the old, the old, uh, the, the Grease and movies where, you know, you know what I'm channeling? The 50s period pieces. So what, if it's Grease, then you're saying you went and held, hung out with the cool kids who went to recitals for their flash mobs? Is, is, is that not cool? There's nothing I'm, cooler than Grease Lightning, Garrett. I'm just clarifying. Nothing cooler. I'm just clarifying. I am just clarifying. Do you know why Kazakus is here? Do tell Celestalon in the chat room. Why is We're Kazakus We're literally just here? waiting for the devs to make us content in addition to the cards. Yeah, I, I don't, actually, because Kazakus... I have no idea. To my knowledge, has never appeared in World of Warcraft, and sure as hell hasn't appeared, like, hanging out in the Barrens. I believe he was original to Hearthstone. Yeah. And if he has shown up in WoW, I am unaware of it. Because the League of Explorers have. 
They've shown up. Well, retroactively, right? Sir, fi- yeah. Sir Finley came into World of Warcraft after his appearance in in, in Hearthstone. But uh, yeah. Oh, oh, fine, fine. Celestalon kept kept us kept us holding and says, "Guess you'll have to find out." Mm. Cool, Celestalon. Cool. See if I ever stretch waiting for your Twitch chats to come in again. I will. I totally this will. This was some good vamping, Gary. You're, you should be proud of this. You're a developer of the game, so I will definitely wait to hear th- things that you say in the past. So <laughs> We'll just be here in our watch post. Speaking oh, of which, by the way. Oh, look at you. Yeah, is watch post desk, desk got to be a thing? That's really just like my end point as we close out on the neutrals. So th- um, for listeners at home, if you're not aware, there is a new neutral legendary called Cargall Battlescar, 7 mana 5-5. Five, five. Battle cry, summon a 5-5 lookout for each watch post you've summoned this game. And there are three other watch posts that are neutral. There's a 2-mana, a 3-mana, and a 4-mana. And uh, they all can't attack, but they they summon... They do things after your opponent does things. So far watch posts, for example... Very eloquent. It's true. Yeah. Far watch posters is the 2-mana, two 2-4 two, watch post... It can attack, but after your opponent draws a card, it costs one more, up to 10, which is very wacky in terms of a card it's, design. It's a it's a permanent cult sorcerer, like it permanently makes the card cost one more. The up to 10, it's like in Biggin, so if you if you hit a survival of the fittest, it doesn't go to 11, because you can't play 11 mana cards, you only have 10 mana. Right. Yeah. Uh, the 3 mana one, after your opponent plays a minion, you summon a 2-2 two, two grunt, and the 4 mana one... Uh, whenever your opponent casts a spell, give all your minions plus one plus one. Uh, I these cards are very aggressively costed, even though you can't attack with them. If I just play, I feel like if I play far watch post on turn two, going first, if my opponent doesn't have a full curve in their hand, they're just never going to play on curve for the rest of the game, and that seems powerful. Well, as long as they don't have a way to deal with the far watch post, right? Right, but so and that's if when I you play do it wanna... on two. If I play it on two and they play a one drop and a two drop and trade them both in, I have made two of their cards cost one more and killed their one drop and two drop with a single card. Yeah, seems That's good. That's a good deal. It's I'll a, take that deal. It is a good deal. What about the others though? Like, is it is it worth it? I don't, I don't know about the the three mana one that summons two twos. I don't think I care all that but much. But what if you what if I play that against your paladin deck, and then on turn three you we want to play one to two minions. I get two twos that can immediately trade into them, right? <laughs> yeah, but I'm also a paladin and I've got Librams and they might not trade kind, like nicely. Maybe. Are you going to spend resources into that 3-5 that can't attack? You're going to let me have two twos all game. What are you going to do? Well, the later we get into the game, the less and less I care because my minions will just get huge. But then I have all these free tutus to keep you from sticking minions. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's fair. It's the the four and a one. I think is the one that I'm least convinced by because you have to already have stuff in play, and it's based on your opponent casting spells, and it's an it's a bit more of a an investment. But the two and three mana ones are pretty inexpensive, and they really inhibit opponent development. Uh, so I I expect that we'll be seeing those cards, and also the two and the three drop. Rally is really good at getting those back, huh? Uh, yes, it is. And the <sighs> legendary is not played, right? Legendary what now? So the Cargal? Oh. Cargal battle? Yes. He said for each watch post you've summoned, which is what Rally does, right? That's right, not played. It's not a play trigger, it's a summon trigger. So you could get potentially a lot of five fives. How Just much, saying. It, I'm more interested in far watch post than I am anything else though. Like how much do I care about so many five fives off of a seven, seven? Cause it's not, like, it's not like they're rushers or something crazy. They're just five fives. New five flame strike deals with that. Yeah, a new flame strike. That's how we have to use that terminology. New flame strike. Uh, yeah, new what flame strike deals with that. When will new flame strike be flame strike and current flame strike be old flame strike? When will that change? 
at a certain point, we'll just start saying flame strike again to reference five damage, and that's that's the point. It's just over. It feels so weird. It makes the hairs in the back of my neck stand it up. It does feel weird, but at some point, we're going to get there. At some point, one day, Hat, you will be on a podcast. Probably true. <laughs> Seems likely. And you're going to say, it's a flame strike. And everyone's going to know what you mean because they're in their brains going to just immediately think five damage to the board. And that's that's when it happens. I don't like it. But speaking of things we're, imme- we're eventually going to get to, how about the outro? How about it? How about the end of this here program? Um, yeah, uh, it's... This is the single biggest like change upheaval in the history of Hearthstone, so I hope everybody's ready for it. I hope everyone is sufficiently hyped because I am really looking forward to this expansion. Um, so I hope you enjoyed our, our, our breakdown here and maybe gave you some ideas for... Uh, for archetypes and whatnot that you can give a, give a try. Um, but that is going to bring us to the end of this episode. So thank you everybody for listening. Huge thanks to our patrons for supporting us. If you want to support the angry chicken, the best way to do so is to go over to patreoncom slash TAC right now. We are an independent program, uh, is a good, a, a major portion of how I make my living is creating content. Um, and that is because of our patrons. So thank you very much. Check it out. Patreon.com slash TAC, get some perks, access to the discord, Ad free version of the podcast automatically through your own personal custom RSS feed made just for you. It's wonderful. You know, you want that. Also, huge thanks to our Patreon producers, Declination Cheesy Bob. If you want to become a producer, check out patreon.com slash tech. Uh, other than that, you can find the whole back catalog of Angry Chicken episodes over at theangrychicken.com. Uh, and you can catch us live Wednesdays, typically around 5.30 p.m. Eastern time over twitch.tv slash TV. We may be going a little bit later for the next few weeks uh, for to, to accommodate Hat's schedule as you fill in for Jocelyn while she's out. Yes, to accommodate the MTA schedule. Thanks, MTA. Trains, how do they work? Yeah. They, they leave at specific times less frequently than I would like. I cannot wait to get vaccinated and visit New York again. I It's top of my list. Sorry yes. to my SoCal friends. I really want to go back to New York. Really, really bad. I'll see you for BlizzCon, everybody. Um, all right. Other than that, Hat, where can people find you when you're not doing the Anger Chicken? I'm in the place that you want to visit. Um, also, <laughs> yes. Also, uh, when I'm not doing this show, I am doing Coin Concede, which is on Thursdays, or Vicious Syndicate, which I record on Fridays and publish Saturdays, uh, or I tweet, like, a lot, especially this week, twitter.com slash ridiculous hat. Just go there, and all my stuff is there. Garrett's eyes flared up when I said a lot, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm underselling it a little bit. Um, um, I, it's it, Listen, I did... I wasn't going to call him out, but, but this is a good time to mention it. I was trying very hard to find Celestalon's original tweet where he was breaking down how Kazakus works, you, you tweet a lot, Celestalon. I couldn't find it. It was really far back and I had a hell of a time finding it. Anyway, it's just a note. Celestalon is one of the very few people that I consider to be, uh, to have beaten me soundly in the Twitter game. He's got it on lockdown. There, I will I will also finish with this, Celestalon. You are, there are plenty of other people I follow uh, that tweet as much as you. I've muted a lot of them. I haven't muted you. I mean, so there you're, you are, you are on this really fine line of like a lot of tweets and I am, I am into it. It is relevant to my interests and I want to see it. So there you go. Um, I think, I think a net balance that was a compliment. <laughs> this, this is going to take too much, uh, explanation to backpedal. So I'm just going to stand by it. I think he took it as a compliment too. Yeah. We'll be cool. good. We're, we're all right. We're all right. Wonderful. We're okay. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Don't stop tweeting Celestalon. Don't stop. Oh, all right. I'm reading this joke from chat. You can't stop me. From Corny22385. If he gets too annoying, just turn him Celestial Loft. <laughs> let's uh, stop the show. Corny's let's, living uh, up to his yeah. name. I'll see you tomorrow for into the Nexus, Corny. Well done. Um, I'm Garrett Art on Twitter. Uh, Amove.tv for this podcast and every single other one that I produce. I'll be recording a new Wow Killer tomorrow morning with Tally Essen. Uh, I'm not sure what we're talking about yet. If we're going to be talking more retail, if we're going to talk about Burning Crusade Classic, which I just got into the beta of and played some uh, on stream, as a matter of fact, today. I resurrected Coffee and Classic for three hours this morning to go try out the Burning Crusade Classic beta. Throwback. I died to a Fell Reaver legitimately. This was not like a thing I did just for the stream. I actually, the, the bastard snuck up on me, um, as they tend to do. And I died and it ignored my feign death. It didn't give a shit. It was just like, <laughs> I know you're still alive. One hit, gone. 
Um, so hear that on Wild Killer into the Nexus. My Heroes of the Storm podcast also records tomorrow. And uh, you can also find back catalog Bang and Chicken over there at amove.tv. Everything's there. Go check it out. That's going to wrap it up for the show. Tweet at Joss Plays. Let her know she's the best. Uh, maybe include a unicorn gif. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. So until next time, until we get to talk to you after having actually experienced Forged in the Barrens, job's done. Job's done.